رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ May the dua that we all do, everyone do it. You do it for yourself, you do it for your children, right? Ya Allah, give me, give me, هَبْ لِي, gift me مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ A child that is righteous. What is wrong with that? Beautiful. هَبْ لِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Immediately, number one da'wah, number one du'a was absolutely granted. فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ فَ Immediately, we gave him the glad tiding. بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ And there's a very important reason why it is this description. We gave him the glad tiding of number one, a boy. Because Allah specifically says غُلَام Now there was no ultrasound that time. Nobody knows, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bashar we gave him the glad tiding. The wife did not even deliver yet. And how old was the wife? 86. We gave him the glad tiding. You will have a boy. That's not it. Because now you say, okay, I can go and do an ultrasound and I know it's a boy or a girl. What is the big deal? This is how shaitan comes to us. Allah gave him the description that you and I would love to have in our children, halim, forbearing. And when you read the commentary of it, I loved it. Look at the ulama, see it. They say he did not only gave him a glad tiding of a character of the son, but he gave him a glad tiding that the son will live longer because somebody who is forbearing is not a child, right? Child is not forbearing. Child usually cry easily. They don't have patience. When you say someone is halim, meaning he had reached a certain age, that they become forbearing. بَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ So gave him the glad tiding. Imagine this. And if you read in other places how his wife took this glad tiding. فَصَكَّتْ وَجْهَا وَقَالَتْ عَجُوزٌ عَقِيمٌ She changed her face and uh, like clenched her teeth and says, what? Old, infertile woman? Another place. But this is not the, here, this is not the most important thing. Then suddenly, the woman delivered and the child grew up. When the child grew up and reached an age, Allah didn't say the age. He said, meaning the child reached an age that he is able to work with his father. A sa'i that we all do when we go for hajj is actually hard work. So they said this child became an age that he can help his father. Very different opinion about how old the range is between seven and 13. If you read all the commentaries, they say he was between seven and 13. So there's two characters so far about the child of Sayyidina Ibrahim that we know. Number one, he's forbearing. And number two, hardworking, help his father, which we all love to have this in our children, right? But this is not it. This is like the introduction. And who is the child? There is a huge different opinion. Half of the scholars of Tafsir, the old one, they say it's Ishaq, actually. And half and some of the contemporary real scholar, they say, no, it's Sayyidina Ibrahim, uh, it's Sayyidina Ismail. And I loved the commentary that said, it doesn't matter. Because the idea is not who is he. Who, which one? Whether it's Fatima or Sara, or it's Ishaq, or it is uh, 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 Ismail. It is who was he as a human being. Did you get the, it doesn't matter what is my name or your name. It is how the child respond. So it doesn't matter how was he, how does he look, don't let shaitan take you away. And now comes in the test, now the father. Now the child grow up, the child is beautiful, the child is absolutely helping the father, taking all the burden off him. Sayyidina Ibrahim, see the dream. And in the commentary they say, when the child was born, Sayyidina Ibrahim said, I will give him a sacrifice to Allah. He said it. 
that I will give him a sacrifice for Allah. But I'm sure he didn't think this is how it's going to be, the test. Now he is 7 or 13, that age, which is in these days an age you're talking about probably a college age because that time people like Feta, when they grew up, they grew up quickly and they become more mature quickly. The father see a dream. And I will share with you what some of the scholars said about it. It's, it's amazing, the incident itself. So the Sayyidina Ibrahim saw a dream. And in the dream, he is actually slaughtering his son. Oh my son, I see in a dream that I am slaughtering you. Dabh is a slaughter. Qurbani. That's the other word we all use. What's qurbani mean? You slaughter an animal, but why? To get closer to Allah. Qurbani is from qurba, to get closer. It's not the idea to slaughter to eat. It's actually to get close to Allah. Okay? So the son, the immediate answer, qala ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. Oh my father, do what you are ordered. Ya abati, and when you read it in the Quran, for those of you who know to read Arabic, and that ta has no ya. It's only alif ba ta. It's very short. Very short. Sign of love and closeness. We don't need a fourth letter. We just a kasra. Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. Do what you are ordered. Neither the father hesitated, became hesitant. Second thought, maybe I was wrong. Neither the son. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing this one. Look at you and me and look at us when Allah asks us to do something difficult. I'm not going to say something easy, something difficult. Think of something difficult we as women, or as a mother, or as a daughter, or as a human being, a man. Allah asks us to sacrifice something that, quote unquote, does not make sense. Right? What is our response usually? Oh, why well, it's not fair or well, i'm sure it's not the meaning and we start trying to find excuses not sayyidina ibrahim and this is now the description of the story this is from the commentary of the quran they say he took his son and he didn't tell him right away he took him and he says let's go and give sacrifice to allah he didn't say it's you and with him he took a knife and a rope and he took him it's somewhere in Mecca in between Mina and Mecca that's what the, the scholars differ is it in Mecca itself some says it's in the Hatim and some says it's in Mina itself and some says it's in between again the place is not the issue so when he get to the place where there was no one he looked at him and says my son you are the sacrifice and he said the ayah, I see in the dream, I am slaughtering you. And the, the son says, Do what you are ordered. But look what he said. Look what he said. He said, Oh father, take my forehead and sit on my chest and bring the knife. So when the knife comes close, when I move, the knife does not hurt you. Ya Allah. It's amazing. And this story is amazing. Amazing. And don't slaughter me when I am in a prostration. And say to my mother, peace be upon her. And if you see it is okay, take my shirt and give it to my mother. Maybe this will make her feel better. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And Sayyidina Ibrahim says, what a servant of Allah you are. This is the answer of his dua. He made a dua, Ya Allah, habli mina salihin. Give me a son that is righteous. That's the righteous. Then Sayyidina Ibrahim actually tied him and started 
and he kissed him and start both start crying brought the knife to the front can you imagine this i cannot see an animal being slaughtered let alone is an animal a human being let alone my son let alone this son and when he brought the knife the knife did not move it did not so he changed the direction and went in the back back of the neck and what happened with the knife turned upside down the other way around here allah said ya ibrahim qad saddaqta ru'ya this point allah said to him ya ibrahim you fulfilled the dream in hadha lahu al bala al mubin this is the great test wa fadaynahu bi dhibh azim and we made sacrifice with a huge sacrifice the idea is not to kill your son that's the meaning the idea is number one to obey allah then you're gonna say why this test why it couldn't be something else do you ever think of this why this test why i mean obedience to allah can be in any other way but why specifically this very difficult test because sayyidna ibrahim allah said to him i do not accept anyone in your heart but me and he saw that he is loved he loves his son and of course you love the son it's your son you're much older and look at the son so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was testing him is he truthful in al qalb al salim is he truthful so you and me when we claim the claims i love you ya allah you give me this and see what i will do here you go allah wanted him wanted him to, wanted to see if Allah wanted Sayyidina Ibrahim. And this is very nice. I wrote it down because I loved it. They say, and this is an Imam al qurtubi he said, Ibrahim claimed that he loved Allah. Then he looked at his son and he loved his son, which is very natural. I mean, everybody loves their children. Hardest thing is the children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his beloved, did not accept any competition or any partner and he says ya ibrahim slaughter your son for me fi mardati for me and sayyidina ibrahim took the knife and went on to do it and he said this is in sayyid al qurtubi he said ya allah accept him from me so i can please you Ya Allah, what did we give for Allah? What did we give for Allah? Yani time, five minutes to do a proper salah is very hard for us, right? Let alone give money. Let alone forgive people. Let alone do something pure for Allah with no reward. No, I'm not talking about painful. I'm not talking about losing the, 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 the sun. And we struggle so much. And look how shaytan in case you think it's only us and this is also an imam al qurtubi he said a shaytan came to sayyidina ibrahim this is before the the uh, cast of the pebble and he said if i am able to lure ibrahim then i don't need to do anything afterward a shaytan the devil so he came to Sayyidina Ibrahim as a man. And he came to, the, to his mother. First came to the mother. And he said, did you know where Ibrahim took your son? Came to the mother. I want you to feel this story. It's not the story. See what happens to us in our daily life, in our homes. So he came to her mother. And he said, do you know where he took your son? She said, no. He said, he took you. He took him to slaughter him. She said, no, 
That's her mother. He is way more softer and loving, and he cannot do that. Then Shaitan says, well, he claims his Lord ordered him to do this. Look at the answer now. This answer needs literally to be engraved in our hearts, in our homes, in everywhere. She said, if his Lord ordered him to do that, he better obey his Lord. Subhanallah, this is the mother. This is the mother. So shaitan has no control here. So he left her. Then he come to the boy, came to Sayyidina Ismail or Ishaq, says, do you know where your father is taking you? And he said, no. He said, he's taking you to slaughter you. And he said, why is that? And he said, he claims his Lord ordered him to do this. And he says, let him obey what his Lord tells him. I hear and I obey what Allah ordered me. That's the son. So now he could not get into the mother. He couldn't get into the son. Now he came to Ibrahim. That's why we cast the babu. And then he came to Ibrahim. And Shaitan said to him, so what do you want? I think, now look at this one. I think Shaitan came to you in your dream to order you to slaughter your son, so don't obey him. See how he twisted it? How he twisted it? I think Shaitan came to you because he came in the form of a man. Shaitan came to you in your dream to make you kill your son, don't obey him. Ibrahim looked at him and said, stay away from me, enemy of my Lord. Stay away from me. Stay away from me, enemy of Allah. By Allah, I am going to do what my Lord ordered me. Billahi la amdiyanna ma amra rabbi. By Allah, I am going to do what my Lord will do. That's when shaitan, now Ibrahim left shaitan. So he came, he, he walked. First time he came to him again was where? Jamratul Aqaba, the big stone that when we go to Hajj that we cast. First one, the big one. And he says, don't do it. And he cast him with seven pebbles and walked. And if so those of you who were to went to Hajj, it's a walk. It's maybe like three, four minutes walk. It's not a big walk. Come again. That teaches you how shaitan keep after us till we disobey Allah. Unless we are Sayyidina Ibrahim or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us and protect us. Came to the middle one. He said, don't do it. Throw him with the seven. Came to the next one. And he threw him with the seven. Most of the Hajj, that's what I keep telling you. Most of the Hajj is actually the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim. And then Shaitan, after third time, I have no control. Took, this is with his son. Took his son and he went. And some say it's in the maqam in Mecca where he slaughtered him. And some says it is not. It's actually a special place in Mina. And some say it is in between. 